Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Darnock in the five minute pool on ICC. This is Grandmaster Conrad Holt. And I'm going to tighten up a little bit in this game, even though today, if you haven't watched my other two videos posted today, I'm trying to play aggressively. But Conrad Holt is an extremely well prepared player. And I don't want to get caught thinking in the opening, so I'm just going to play some of my normal stuff and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go Queen C7 followed by E5. Usually they play G3. Uh, queen d2 is an interesting move. I think I'm supposed to play g6 against this one. I'm going to do that. I will try to explain the reasoning behind queen d2 after the game if I can remember it. <laughs> but for now, I think I'm supposed to do this. Is e5 the move now? Could it be? Nah, I don't think so. Okay, now I'm trying to remember. At least a little bit. But I can't remember. I'm having trouble. Okay, I'm just going to play something solid and try to challenge this knight on c4. I was thinking about e5. I seem to remember e5 is like a move you want to try to play in this line, but it wasn't It wasn't connecting with me. And this guy's 2600 and a very fast and good player, so I got I to gotta be practical. d5, he's coming after me. So if I take, are you going knight b5? Is that your plan, Conrad? I don't see why that would be such a big deal for me. All right, show me what you got. Are you going to take on b6? Probably, and then try to do something on b5. No, he's going knight b5. All right, queen d7 or d8? Probably d7, huh? Stay off the back rank. d8 gives us the d7 square for the knight, though, if necessary. Okay, let's go here, actually. We'll play it safe. He takes, pawn takes, or queen takes? Probably, hmm, tough to say. Because queen takes, there's a5. But pawn takes, I can't ever really challenge his knight. I'm going pawn takes. If queen f4, I have rook c8 to guard against knight c7. Okay, finally he slows down to think. Thank you. <laughs> Knight's coming to e4. Or d4, rather. Yeah, logical move. I, I think I need to get developed. I could take here. But then knight takes, queen takes, take there. Okay, let's do this. Looks risky to open the position, but I think I Check. probably should play this way. Check. I win a pawn. I know my development is kind of shot after this, but like I said, I think I still think we should play like this. He takes, he's castling with check. Alright, I gotta do it though. Check. King g7 or king g8 or even knight f6. What's the word? I feel like I need to get my king out of the way, because if I play knight f6, eventually he's gonna go bishop c4 and rook e1. So, king g8 comes to mind. This is scary, though, because I'm behind in development. I am up two pawns, but I don't think it really matters a whole lot at the moment. Gotta get developed. Knight d6, maybe? Let's go knight d6. I'm gonna give him the b6 pawn in hopes of developing. Ah, uh, that move I missed. Now my position looks tough. Okay, we're going to come here. Let him take and then go king h7. Check. And try for bishop h6, I guess. And maybe bishop here first. Go after b2. So now he's won both his pawns back, but at least I'm coordinated. If rook b1, I, I win a4, so he can't do that. I'm down about two minutes on the clock. Man, it's hard to tame these bishops. Do, do, do. Okay, let's go rook a6. I need some space. I need some activity. Knight here, I was thinking. He has knight... Or bishop c4, rather. Okay, rook a8 would threaten to take here. Hmm. 
I'm going to try it. I know he can just double up his rooks, potentially. B4. Oh, his rook is actually defended by that bishop. I didn't see that. Well, I could take, 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 check at the end and go win B6 that way. But somehow that seems like an admission of defeat. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, let's go here. Try to attack that pawn. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's try this. So if bishop c4, I can take b6, I think. Because if he takes my rook, I take back. And he's pinned. I believe that works. B5. Yeah, at least here I can... I can do this. Well, I gotta do this, actually. So now I'm down three minutes on the clock, and I'm probably in a technically losing endgame, or close to it. <laughs> I don't know. It might be hard for him to win B7. We'll find out. I'm guarding D7, at least. Let's get our king over. If bishop d5, I Check. have bishop c7, so he can't do that. Check. I gotta come out with my king now. If king g7, he had rook f7. Hmm. Let's bring this over to assist. Probably you can just go rook g8, though, huh? Yeah. Uh, let's give a check. Just find out where he's going with the king. Check. I can't even take there. Okay, I gotta do this. Twenty-two seconds left. So time-wise, I'm uh, I'm going down in flames. Ah, I just drop the bishop. Okay, let's time resign that. Running. Okay, yeah, he played a, um, a sideline that I actually looked at recently, but I completely forgot what to do against it, this queen d2 move. So I, I believe the idea is to go queen f4. Um, like, say, let me go back and look at this. So right about here. So if black plays the typical move e5, then there's take, take, and I think queen f4 is attacking both these pieces and winning a piece. Maybe queen e3 is also good, but no, queen f4 I think is the move. Let me just confirm that with the engine. Yeah, this is bad. If not winning a piece, then it's just bad for black. I can take here, check. gives a check. Knight e5, f4 at the end. Yeah, not good. So, I thought I remembered that g6 was a recommendation in what I have looked at previously. But, clearly after f3, I wasn't quite sure. Okay, and here e5 is the move, according to the engine. I played knight b6 and kept it safe, but the thing I didn't figure out in time is, right here, what happens if uh, queen e3? Trying to pile up on this pin knight. I can go knight d7, but then I was worried about f4. But I have bishop c5 kicking the queen away, so I don't lose the knight on e5. Okay. All right, yeah, so that makes sense. So this is a case where you, ran, you run into a sharp line that demands, like, precise knowledge. And I think I would have figured this out over the board. But in a blitz game, I didn't have the confidence to play e5. So that means I probably have to rehearse this line a little bit more and try to understand its nuances. Like, I knew queen d2 was dangerous, so I was proceeding with caution, but I didn't play the critical move, e5. Instead, I, I played knight b6 in the interest of time. Now probably white's better. I don't think he had to, to play so forcefully, but maybe it's good. This whole d5, knight b5 plan. As I said, Conrad Holt is famous for his opening preparation, so, I mean, it's possible he's even looked at something like this before. But I kind of doubt it, because... It seemed bordering on reckless what he was doing with knight b5. So I played queen d8. And then he took b6. I took with the pawn. I was worried that if I took with the queen, he would go a5. So 
I think pawn takes is reasonable. And then he made a good practical choice. He played knight d4. He didn't try to attack further necessarily, as in like setting up some threat like knight c7, which I can easily guard. He instead just played for structure. He eliminated my bishop on e6 and played for structure. I, I thought about bishop d7, but I didn't like e5. Maybe this is acceptable for black, sending the knight to the edge of the board. Perhaps I can reroute it into the game like so. The computer gives a advantage to black. So instead I took, and we swapped some pieces. So I emerge up two pawns in the resulting position. But you can see that it was not at all easy to play because my structure is terrible for one thing. <laughs> I mean, white has two pawn islands, I have four. And yeah, these, these all represent targets. And also I don't have great coordination by any means. I still need to get my bishop into the game. My king is very likely going to be blocking one of my rooks. Yeah, actually you saw the eval just jump there. It was displaying equality, and now Check. all of a sudden white is clearly for choice. And that's what it felt like during the game. I didn't, I didn't think I was better here at all. I was just fighting for my life. So I didn't play knight f6 because I figured that would create too convenient of a target on e6. Yeah, you can see rook ae1 is the suggestion, and then bishop c4 could be coming. Maybe white could even throw in like a g4 type move to attack my knight with g5. So king g8, bishop e3. Hmm, why is it suddenly equal now? It was saying plus 0.6, and now all of a sudden it's equal again. Now it's back to advantage white. Even the computer is confused. I played knight here. I missed bishop d7. I missed a few things in the ensuing positions. So here instead, my best bet is just to develop. Again, bishop d7 could be annoying, though. Bishop f6. Take, Check. put the king here. Yeah, and you notice in a lot of these lines, black is giving the two pawns back. White has that luxury of just winning those pawns. Yeah, and here I, I'm practically forced to play h5, I think, because his threat is to take. And then after king g7, bishop d4 check and skewer my king to my rook. So I have to cre create an alternative flight square yeah. for the king. Bishop takes b6. And mind you, he still has four of his remaining five minutes. Uh, or, or sorry, um, yeah, four minutes left on his clock. So that's, that's a tough opponent to play against who plays quick and strong moves. Nakamura-like opponent. It's entirely possible I'm already just lost here. It seemed like maybe I had some counterplay, but one thing I missed is that in this position, I'm not actually threatening rook takes b6 now because his bishop holds his rook. Still, though, the engine likes rook ha8. And here I tried bishop c3. Okay, so I'm playing reasonable moves. It might be inevitable that I have to give up the exchange, though. Already the computer is saying just do it right now. Take. Because the issue, if we go back a few moves, his bishops control matters so well that his plan of just pushing the A and B pawns and maybe even just making a pass pawn at some stage is um, already giving me a lot of trouble. You can see my E pawn, which might be a counterweight to like White's B pawn. This pawn hardly plays at all. So I have almost nothing to do because I can't even activate my rooks. Like I can't get to the C file thanks to that rook there. Going to the D or the B files make no sense. I could play rook F8, but I don't think that accomplishes anything. He, he would probably just trade and keep pushing on the queen side. So it almost seems like the way I played it, especially once I double up, I'm bound to give the exchange and just suffer in the end game down a point. Okay, so knight c8 might be even a tactical error. He could have played rook c2, getting off the file. And then if I take here, rook takes c3, and my knight is terribly placed. You see how that bishop corrals the knight so nicely. Knight a4, hitting the rook, hitting the bishop, but he just goes rook e3. This knight is not stable. He's still got the pawn majority. This is looking losing. Yeah. 
Now, I think in a over-the-board game, I would be able to put up reasonable defense from here and test white quite a bit and make white prove the win. Because if I can defend my B pawn and keep the E pawn, black may have some fortress type setups. Of course, if he can win the B pawn, then his B pawn should be unstoppable in the long run. But it's not easy to see how he does that. As played, though, I ended up uh, Check. dropping a piece, although Check. by that point, the time situation, it hardly mattered. <laughs> and he kept playing testing moves like bishop b1, signaling his intention to go here. And I just didn't find a good solution to that either. Check. Probably king h1 was the simplest way for him to play here. Check. I don't think he had to allow this knight coming to f5 to block the bishop. Yeah, now rook d8 and I blundered. But probably it is losing. Oh, because actually if my bishop moves, is he getting in rook d7? Okay, if takes, I guess I can take h2, huh? My bishop can always try to come back and defend the pawn on b6. Yeah, very tough to hold, even with equal time. But being down the time, it was a foregone conclusion that white was going to win. Okay, so tough, tough opponent. I look forward to games with Conrad because this guy, he knows his stuff and he really brings it in these fast time controls. He's a great over-the-board player, first of all, but he's exceptional at fast time controls too. And you can see that even though I won two pawns and largely survived the onslaught in the opening, it was still difficult because of how good White's bishops were and he got those two pawns back and I was at the mercy of his bishop pair plus queenside pawn duo. Yep, should have played e5. That's the opening conclusion I'm going to take away. I think g6 is part of my prep, but I should have played e5 right here. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I didn't do as well in my aggressive games I was trying to play today, but uh, that's part of how chess works sometimes. Sometimes you force the play on your opponent. Other times they force it on you. And I will be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.